let's let's transition into kind of then advice for players like me and um, someone with kind of like a small bankroll. What would you? What would be like kind of your advice in terms of what games to play? Um, what um, would you? Would you play live? Would you play online? If you, if you were going to start now in poker with a quite a small bankroll. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, it's it's been a while since since <laughs> um, since I was I was there. Um, so I like I don't know. I'm not like completely sure how the how the landscape um, shifted like back back in back in the days i get like what i did what i did i played like super low stakes um short stack strategy so basically you basically played it by the chart you uh entered a cash game table with 20 big blinds and then you basically just uh, you look you looked at the chart you opened ace queen plus from another gun you regemmed like a certain kind of hands and you basically only had like open raising ranges and regemming ranges and then you went from there um and you played like one cent two cent two cent four cent four cent five cent ten cent probably at some point mm -hmm. and just like uh really really um grinding it up um while being completely clueless of um of what you were actually doing um and then i i switched to to sit and goes um at some point and like start with probably six dollar tournaments and then 11 and then 22 just like you know always making sure you have those i don't know what was recommended at the time like 100 or 150 buy-ins um so that was like that was like my way of doing it and like bankroll building wise i think it actually worked pretty well like i felt like i had a and like okay bankroll for for the time especially if you compare it that i was still like completely and 100 percent clueless about poker <laughs> i only i i basically hadn't played a hand with uh, with more than 30 big blinds in in all my life and i played like i don't know, like mid mid to high stakes uh sit and goes at the time but you could do you, do you think you you could make more money from from traveling and, and doing live poker or from just like grinding but online because obviously you enjoy probably going to the live circuit like events and stuff but do you think if mm. you maybe like if you if you like was like right i'm gonna have to think about now should i do live or online yeah i think it's um i mean first of all it's like slightly different skill sets that are uh, required um so if I like consider myself a very good um, live poker player, it doesn't necessarily mean that I will instantly be like you know a top top online player like this. Yeah, it's the same game, but like the decision making process is like different with one tabling than with the with with twelve or fifteen tabling. Um, so that's that's uh, one half of it. Um, I think. I think um, to to justify the the life traveling from a financial point of view, it's very tough to not play high rollers. Like if you if you like if basically if you're good enough in playing main events, um, that traveling is worth it for you, and you're also good enough for high rollers because. Yeah, that's it's tough. It's tough to make that much money in in many events to make it worth traveling there, spending your hours there, uh, spending the hotel, spending all, all of that. Um, so yeah, I think I think outside of outside of playing playing high rollers, um, it's tough. It's um, yeah, if you just travel for the mains, it's it's very rarely the right decision because yeah, if you make it work, then you're probably talented enough to make more money online or add high rollers to the schedule, and it only gets like an easy decision for the for the life circuit financially when you play like super high rollers and you like get good markups and that kind of stuff because mm -hmm. then yeah it's tough you know, if you there's if there's people out there who get like five percent markup on playing like you know three hundred thousand dollar tournaments million dollar tournaments whatever like you can't make that money with the uh, with grinding with grinding online tournaments 
right now. Although, I mean, technically, if you like for a while, you could very recently with like the GG games running. Uh, but yeah, like that's new. Yeah. Lot of, there's a lot of good spots for low stakes tournament players to build a bankroll, in my opinion. Like I'm always, you know, fairly surprised on how, how, um, how there. There's a few sites who don't really care about making their guarantees on on those buy-ins. They're just like, yeah, okay, so they're giving away fifteen uh, percent of the of the price pool um, in in overlays, but they don't really. They like they they want people to um to beat the games and they want people to like uh, make it up make it up to to uh, to not lose interest and uh, wake wake more in the in the future um and then if that's the comparison that you're looking for like uh you know like this the seven dollars with 15 percent roi without having a skill edge is you know you don't need a lot of those to make ten dollars an hour is what i'm what i'm trying to say yeah um, and like sometimes it's not 15%, sometimes it's just, it's uh, 30%. And ideally, it shouldn't be too hard to um, have uh, like I don't know 20, 25% ROI um, on those kind of fields before before overlays. And then suddenly we're not talking about like 15, 20% ROI. Suddenly we're talking about 30, 35, 40% ROIs. Um, and then you, you you know then then dollar dollar an hour wise tournaments become a, a great option like super quickly for sure like at those stakes those are the those are like the um what are those called like the screws that you uh that you work on on first because it's like the situations that are most uh repetitive it's the spots where you know you play that you play uh that you play most often and it's the spot where, where like you will um, see the results the the quickest. Mm -hmm. um, like it doesn't like you know it's tough to really make money of like when you when you like know which rivers to the jam with in three red pots, 150 big lands deep. That's just because you know the spot comes up um, twice on a Sunday at best, um, while the opening button and sea bedding is like. You know, comes up uh, 150 times, and is just like so much easier to to not even not even solve, just to get like um, you know just just have like rules of thumbs for those um, those situations. Like you know, you you have a you have like a an opening range, you have your defending range, then you uh, differentiate the flop into let's say three different boards, maybe five different boards. And then you know you go you go from there, um, and in my opinion, that plus like um, open jamming charts and uh, calling charts, which are like you know free everywhere and are yeah. like fairly fairly good, um, that has to be all it takes for for those kind of kind of stakes to have like a significant skeletal on the skeletal on the field. Um, so yeah, that would be what I what I would be looking into and you're obviously like you're in a you're in a you're in a good spot for uh, Banco for Banco building too with like with like the with like the streaming and the um, getting tickets for the tickets for tournament men's occasionally like you know like then then you already only need to play the one dollar the one the one seven dollar uh, tournament per hour if you're not paying the buy-in because that's the ten dollars that you already make with the one tournament um, and I think like as long as you as you have that spot and as long as streaming is something that um that I that you want to do then I don't like I'm not sure I see the the big benefits of um, of switching to to spin and goals like yeah from a yeah. from a from, from a um, getting more familiar with with uh, with blind versus blind situation sure it can be interesting but if we're talking about um yeah if you if we're talking a, a bankroll building uh, building approach it's probably not not even necessary you know what's probably more important uh, for like bankroll building is like spending habits for example <laughs> like it's it's like if you have like a different job that's that's 
really great for you because that means you don't have to take the rent out of the out of the bank core because like yeah i mean rent rent in the i don't know what's what the isle of men situation is but like yeah that'll that'll take quite a few hours of work um out of the out of the paycheck um and that'll make it a lot tougher to build The win obviously was the Super High Roller Ball in 2016. Uh, you ended up yeah. uh, playing. I actually remember watching this live. Um, what um, you played Fader Holtz right a heads up for it was it? Yeah. 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 I mean, it doesn't really make for too much of a fav of a favorite moment because it was actually fairly uh, like it was pretty pretty stressful actually. Oh wow. Um, but yeah, like looking looking back, that was obviously obviously great. Um, Especially with the uh, with the combination of like uh, you know making it that far with Fedor, who like also put himself on the line uh, to to give me the opportunity to uh, to play it. Like I hadn't, I didn't have a lot of um, of uh, super high roller experience, if any. Like I think I played, I had played like 125k before or something along those oh, lines. Wow. Um, and suddenly I uh, played a 300k, which was like you know once and once again, well, that was like an amazing spot. Like that was. Crazy to think how um, good these tournaments were at the time. Um, so yeah, I mean, in in that regard, it's obviously like like a, a breakout, breakout win. Um, but I'm not sure. It's like it makes for a great favorite favorite moment. Like I kind of like I I actually really enjoyed the 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 grind the grind of it all. Like the the just like I don't know like the same year. Or probably the year before, like summer in two, of 2015, for example, I didn't. I was in Vegas for like for like well, like four weeks or something, and I b basically didn't leave the uh, I didn't leave the the um, the Sydney satellite area. I just like played three hundred dollar um, three hundred dollar no NT ten hundred Sydney goes. <laughs> all day or summer and like those kind of um i don't know those kind of experience they feel a lot more um like rewarding because you're just it's like such a such you know you just so so clearly get like paid for putting in putting in your time and effort and just like feels like yeah that you know that's if i if i if i do that for that that amount of time i go out with you know with this plus minus of it but like you know, it feels like it feels more deserved like winning winning a big tournament is just like yeah so i got lucky uh, several times probably most more lucky than anybody else in the field um just yeah you can't really take credit for it um so those um those moments oftentimes uh make make or less uh yeah give less uh, satis satisfaction um than one would probably think So just to uh, end on this, so what is your, what is kind of your next goals for poker? What is your, are you going to concentrate still on live poker or are you going to go back to Grand and Online, go back to Brighton? What 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 do you think, well, ne within the next year or next few years, well, what is your kind of like ambitions in poker? Yeah, tough, tough to say, um, very tough to say. I, I kind of decided that this year I, um, want to be at more stops where i want to be like just like if i go to play live i go to you know i go to uruguay because i want to see uruguay and then maybe a little less um i don't know like yeah, i don't <laughs> i don't want to name i don't want to name place it seems so <laughs> seems mean but yeah there's just like the kind of place where you go to because you feel like it's the it's the um you should be there it's the right decision to go and then you go there and you're not necessarily um yeah super super happy with, with being there just like solely uh, financial kind of decisions so i am hoping for this year that i'm you know doing a little less of those and just i try to um if i'm if i play live poker to um drop in a few stops to places i haven't been places i wanted to go and you know less about yeah little less about little less about uh, how much money you make a tournament you know contradict what uh, i said earlier about the building a bankroll and uh, online grind yeah, 
I mean, what are you searching for? Um, I, I don't know. Since I was, uh, say, let's say like 11, even 11 years old, there's a picture of me in, in my like school yearbook when I was, when I was 11. Uh, it was like me in 10 years time. And it was like, I'll be in Vegas for my 21st birthday. Um, and it was like, I want to be like a professional poker player. So since, since I was like 11, I've had like my dad, my uncle, my granddad, They've like, I've just like grew up with poker because they've always been like big poker players. They've never been like professionals, but they just like played it for fun. Uh, so like I, as I've grew up and, and then when I was like 16 to 18, I found, uh, well, I've, I grew up watching poker, like likes of the high stakes poker and stuff on telly. And uh, and then at like when I was like 18, I found like Twitch poker. So I started watching people. And, and I think that's kind of why I wanted to go into streaming and, and playing and trying to get better because... I've like I've looked at the likes of uh, like Jamie Staples. I started; he was the first stream I watched, and see the look of likes of Lex now. And um, uh, you, you probably know as well uh, Henry um, Bruello. He's just signed with No Limit Gaming. Um, so he's he. I've watched him since like he was playing the micro stakes. So so he's like I think he's a couple of years older than me. But I, but I, I've seen him like go, go from the micro stakes and like build his following up on Switch, build his bankroll, and now he's like playing like high stakes online. So I, I think I've kind of looked at them type of people and thought like why why not me? Like if they can do it, like why can't I? And and like poker's my like main passion in life. So um, yeah, so like like you said at the moment, uh, I do have a side job which is my like main income. But I would love to eventually. My long-term goal is to be hopefully a full-time streamer slash poker player. Uh, but yeah, we will see. Number that um that is people don't talk about when schedule selecting is like they don't look at the the money they make per tournament enough, and it's like it's so clearly the only thing that that matters. Like if you make the same amount of money in, in a in a ten dollar tournament as you make in a, a hundred dollar tournament. Like potentially even oftentimes a lot of people make a lot more in the in the twenty dollar tournament than the hundred dollar tournaments. And like yeah, it's just most people have trouble um not skipping the or skipping the hundred dollar tournament if they have like the bankroll um for the hundred dollar tournament. But like it doesn't really matter. It's still like a bad decision um to play it if therefore you skip tournaments where you make uh, more money with uh, investing less. Mm-hmm. So so let's get on to a bit about like Grace Snow. So um well obviously I am the first member of the Grace Snow Poker Academy and your uh the first like major uh, Grace Now Poker ambassador. Do you want to just maybe tell people a bit about Grace Now and kind of like how come? Because there was a few eyebrows raised maybe from the poker community when you did uh, announce you were a Grace Now Poker ambassador. I did see on like Twitter and stuff. So like how? So just please explain to people like why why Grace Now. And you're putting you're putting me in the spot here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I've I've said these uh, these things before. Um, I just like they they contacted me. They were searching um, for for an ambassador outside of or outside of the United States um, because they don't currently offer offer games there. And at the time, they did offer them in in mid in, in Middle Europe, uh, Central Europe, and so we just like fairly casually um, started started uh, talking. Um, and it was really like, it was a pretty, um, pretty straight line, um, all the way. They just kind of, you know, they, they felt like I was, I was a good pick for their brand. And I had, um, I had like a good feeling, feeling with them and the, the idea they had for the, for the side and for the game and for, you know, the stuff surrounding it. Um, so yeah, I mean, the whole, the whole contact process was just like super smooth. Um, and it's been like, and it's been like, like nearly, nearly a year now. And like, that's kind of still where I am. Like everything still is, is, uh, super smooth with them. It's like going the, the exact direction, um, everybody had hoped it, it would go. I believe like the numbers are getting better. The turnouts, um, are getting better. They are making up on all the like promises they, they made, like, you know, up, upholding the, uh, the, the overlays, for example, um, which is like, it's one thing to do that 
for for a couple of months where like doing it for um that long of 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 a time is not like you know you can't be you can't be um yeah can't be can't really be mad if somebody decides that that's not really the investment they want to they want to go with um but they yeah keep keep doing that and um yeah i mean just the fact that they are running like the second um hundred thousand dollar guarantee um tournament in like a week from now is um like a good a really good yeah sign sign for the for the process on the on the side like i think when i um signed with them last may or june or something um like we couldn't have been further away from from running hundred thousand dollar guarantee tournaments and so even though we didn't um like make the guarantee last last time in december it wasn't december right just just yeah. christmas um yeah i mean they're doing it again and that's uh, yeah that's it's pretty awesome to even have that kind of liquidity on the side yeah for sure 